So I get a ton of questions about this thing every day and even though I've talked about it in earlier YouTube videos and thought I had already said everything that is to be said about it, you guys keep asking me questions about this ball diffuser setup all the time. So I thought in this video I want to answer all of your questions, I'm going to tell you how to use this, where to get the different parts, what's good about it, what's bad about it, everything you need to know. So let's go! When you're doing macro photography, uh, it is very good to have a flash and when you use a flash, the light gets very very harsh and not that beautiful at all if you're not using a diffuser as well. A diffuser is something that will soften the light, it's something that is white and translucent, such as my umbrella here that I'm filming this video with, uh, or a plastic dome uh, that you can put over a flash. Uh, when you put a diffuser over the flash the light gets a lot softer and that is what you want otherwise it will not look good. For example let me show you what happens if I remove the diffuser that I have over my video light right now. The diffuser is gone and this is how it looks. Uh, not as nice as with the diffuser right? And the same applies for macro photography. Basically you want the light source to be as big and as close to the subject as possible and the diffuser uh, helps you do this. Basically the light source will become this big instead of being just a small lamp. And this particular setup that I'm using it's built on three components. First we have this uh, wireless transmitter, this small device from Godox that you put on your camera to transmit the uh, flash signal. And then you have the flash itself, I will talk more about it in a second. And then you have this diffuser ball and I will talk about that one as well and where I bought it and where you can buy one. So the reason I like this setup is that it is um, very nice to be able to uh, have a lighter camera in one hand and then the flash in a separate hand because then it's so easy to adjust the angle that the light is coming from and also I can like briefly move the flash away a bit and get a bit so, uh, less strong light uh, and I can move it closer to get stronger light and I can um, yeah very easily in real time adjust the light uh, as I'm doing the photography. Of course you could also mount a flash arm on your camera and attach the flash to that, that is what most people do. But I found that those arms are so hard to work with and just frustrating and it's very hard to get exactly the right angle. And when you finally get the right angle the insect is long gone, so you missed your shot. Uh, with this setup I can uh, in an instant uh, get the light from the right angle uh, and with the right distance. So uh, that is why I like it so much. And also um, it is very easy to go from a very high magnification uh, to a very small magnification. Uh, I can easily just move the flash uh, to whatever point the insect is sitting. Um, yeah, it's, it's just uh, very convenient I think to have a wireless flash that I hold in one hand and then I hold the camera in the other hand. Also in many cases I can just put the flash down on the ground and then if the insect is sitting here I can just lay the flash down like this and then I can hold my camera with both hands and take the photo. So it's a very um, flexible solution and I like it a lot. There are a couple of downsides of course with using a setup like this. The most obvious one is that uh, you uh, have both hands occupied um, so you don't have any hands free to do other things. Uh, and you only have one hand on your camera most of the time. But I don't, don't find that to be a big problem. Uh, it's no problem at all, I think, to, to do macro photography with just one hand. So, where can you buy this ball? Uh, I get lots of questions about that as well. I bought mine at a Swedish company called Grangården, which is basically, I think, like a hardware store. And I think you can probably buy this at most hardware stores, no matter what country you live in. I've seen them in many places. This is basically just for a light fixture. It's made to, it has a groove here, so you can made to screw it on over a light bulb. You can probably go into any hardware store's website and search for like light bulb plastic dome. And um, yeah. I mean, I will leave you the link to the exact place where I bought it. I think it's actually sold out there and they only probably shipped to Sweden. 
Uh, but just so we have the link to that exact place, because many of you have been asking about that, and then I will probably try to find a couple of more places to buy it that I will link to in the video description down here, so go check that out. And uh, yeah, uh, this cost me $4, and it doesn't have a brand name, it's just a plastic dome, uh, nothing special about it. I mean, you can buy any ball you want, uh, I just was a bit lucky that it actually fits on the flash without any um, tape or anything. I was actually planning to... Oh, <laughs> that was maybe not the right way to do it. Uh, I was very lucky that it actually fit. That was just lucky coincidence that it fits so well without tape or anything. Uh, but if you would buy a ball that is a bit too large, obviously you can find a creative solution to that. Maybe just add some tape or whatever. Uh, but just to be clear here about the specifics, if you want to have exactly the same setup as I have. So if I'm measuring the flash head here, it is um, 7.5 centimeters uh, wide. And uh, if I then measure uh, the opening here uh, on this ball, and now I have kind of um, tweaked it a bit, uh, so it's not completely round anymore. Uh, but it is around, yeah. Surprise, surprise, it is 7.5 centimeters on the inside. Uh, yeah, and then the diameter of the whole ball uh, seems to be around 15 centimeters. Uh, this flash, if you follow my channel, you have seen it a hundred times, probably. I've used it for a few years now. It's the Godox TT685, and I think actually the S here stands for Sony. I might be wrong, but I think there's like versions for Sony, Canon, Nikon, and basically all brands. And then I use uh, this transmitter that comes with the flash from Godox X1T. And usually you can buy them in a package, I think I bought mine from Amazon, and they are very good quality and very good value for money, I would say. And that is why I like this setup so much. It's a solid setup for wireless flash. One small thing that you must know if you buy this particular transmitter and flash is that uh, sometimes it doesn't fire that well uh, when you're doing macro photography. And I googled this a lot when I had this problem and I found the solution. So basically uh, it, this transmitter is optimized for a bit of a longer distance that you usually have uh, to your flash. But in macro photography you most often have the flash very close to the transmitter so it doesn't work that well. But if you, when you turn the transmitter on, make sure to hold this um, test button here, hold this down and then turn it on. And then you can see that the status will blink two times. And that means that it has gone into like close range mode, which will work a lot better for macro photography. So that is something you must know if you're using this flash and this transmitter. As I said earlier, you can use any flash and any transmitter. Uh, it isn't anything magical with the Godox. It's just a good flash for a good price, basically. What settings should I use with this? And I am actually going to refer you to my uh, macro photography settings video because the same applies here as with any other type of uh, flash settings. Uh, but what I do is I put my camera in manual mode and some good settings to start with if you have um, any camera, any macro lens and a flash setup like this is to put the camera in manual mode, set the shutter speed to around 1 250th of a second and set your ISO to 100 or 200 or whatever the base ISO of your camera is, just set it to something low. And then set the aperture of your um, lens to f8. That is usually a good all-round starting point for insect macro photography. And then you put the flash in manual mode as well. And uh, I find that a good starting point, it of course depends on the weather and the other settings, but a good starting point is to set the flash at 1 16th in strength. And then you simply take a test shot and if it is uh, overexposed you decrease the strength of the flash and if it is underexposed you increase the strength of the flash and that's it. It's very easy and usually once you've found settings that work you can usually use the same settings the whole photo walk so it's not really an issue that you're in manual mode it doesn't create extra work and I think it's nice because then you can be sure what your exposure will be. 
And people are asking me, why did I stop using my Mike MK320 flash that I actually did a separate video about because I like it so much. I did not stop using it. I use a lot of different tools and um, in each photo walk I like to vary what I'm using. I don't like using the same things over and over again because that just gets boring. So sometimes I use this flash. Sometimes I use the Mikey MK320, sometimes I use something else, and sometimes I don't use a flash at all. I just like to vary, uh, mix things up a bit to uh, have more fun. So just because uh, you're not seeing one of the flashes I recommended in every video after that, it doesn't mean that I stopped using it. And by the way, I mean, the MK320, yeah, that's a good flash, it's very good value for money, but it's not something magical with it or anything. You can use any flash for macro photography, basically any flash at all. So you shouldn't feel the need to buy exactly the flash I use. Uh, that is just a suggestion for me. It doesn't mean that that is like a uh, hundred times better than any other flash. Use whatever flash you want, you would probably get similar results. And that also goes for this flash, of course. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you got your questions answered. If not, leave a comment below and I will try to help you out. This is a great setup to use with any macro lens uh, on any photo walk. And uh, it is actually over the past year become one of my favorite um, lighting solutions for macro photography, especially when I'm doing freehand macro photography. I love it. Um, yeah. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and leave a like if you like this video, it helps this channel a lot. And also don't forget my fantastic inspiration newsletter about photography. It comes out once per month, it's completely free. Go sign up now. <laughs> Thank you for watching, over and out, bye bye.